Hey everyone, I'm going to my garage uh, because today is the day when I'm going to disassemble the wheel to see what is going on with the wheel inside after that crazy fall that I had uh, a few days back. This is going to be a pretty short video about tearing down uh, the veteran links that I dropped from a 600 meters mountain from the top to the bottom. Uh, it was a crazy accident that I experienced. If you missed the video, it's in the description down below. So yeah, enjoy if you haven't yet. Anyway, so this video is about evaluating the damage because I'm very curious what is going on inside of the wheel. And well, because it looks pretty bad and I need to figure out what I'm doing now because I need to fix it somehow. And I need to figure out what parts I salvaged and what parts I lost. So let's start. Uh, so here's the wheel. The battery pack still had some impact here. Uh, it doesn't look like significant, but makes sense to uh, to worry about it. Well, because lithium ion batteries and it might be not safe if it got damaged. I don't think so, but well, it was hell of a fall, so. Okay, I took off the pedals. It's interesting that even this uh, clip that hold them together didn't break and the Velcro didn't come off even a bit. So yeah, super, super strong Velcro. Here's the damage of the first um, uh, handlebar and I think it just hit the ground with this part and completely broke off it from the wheel and impacted uh, this corner of the wheel as well. This is a piece that broke. So the pedal survived and I like these pedals. The pedals are good. We got another handle off. It's definitely having some scratches all over, but it's not broken, so it's fully functional. Because I'm spinning that bolt and it's not turned off. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Oh yeah, it's just turning, yeah. It's just turning, probably we just need to rip it off. Yeah, it's broken. Yeah. All right. Wow. Let's disconnect this. All right. Oh, it's interesting because the controller is in in the second shell. And, uh, yeah. Somewhat. It actually gives me some confidence with the water water resistance of this because it's got a shell over a shell. It's, right? it's pretty water resistant. I think it's rated IP fifty five, so it's water uh, water resistant, not waterproof. Right. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, well, on the bright side, we have a lot of screws to salvage, right? Yeah. Which we can use somewhere else. I could build a new wheel or maybe a bench. This is the one here in the corner that was broken. What's going on here? Is this sheared? I have no idea. Yeah, I think so. It looks like that. Oh, wow. It's yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's. Is that a, the one that wasn't turning? It's a part of this metal uh, part, I think. So it's oh. like, it's like, like that. Oh, I see, I see, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a mount for, for a screw. It's a very strong plastic. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the screen just fell off. Is it hard? Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah, this it. wire here got the shell that I got severed. I'm not quite sure. Well, what would that yeah, couldn't be? It no. could, it, yeah. Wow, it's bad. Look at this. Just, the controller, though, I mean, like this part of the controller is not too bad. I mean, it survived this motherboard, I think. Oh, this might be like your. Uh, I wouldn't touch it with my fingers, though. Yeah, no. I need just to unplug everything first. Yeah, this is yeah, it's it's dead pretty much. Although if if uh, we had about an inch less of the impact, I think it would survive. Yeah, and uh, I'm not quite sure what is going on here because it doesn't look too good, man. I don't know how that would happen inside there. It, it does look like something might have struck here though. Like, what is there? Does it? You know, am I mistaken? It kind of looks like yeah. it's not critical. It's just a wire shell, but I mean. I hope probably some part just went through uh, the thing. What is the term for uh, a semi-horrible condition? <laughs> like the, the the entire scope of the condition hasn't been fully Yeah, it's ana horrible, yet. but not exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible here, but... Post-horrible, I guess. You know it's going to be horrible. <laughs> it's post-horrible. Okay, I'll take Okay, so 
we figured out that we need to take off the side panels first and then we'll probably unscrew the, the board from them. Oh, oh that's very oh, oh, look at that. Look at this. What is shooting? Uh, film? Yeah. yeah. All right, so. Uh, do we have any signs of the impact? Mm -hmm. A little bit here, but it's like very minimal, I would say. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't even care about this. One. Looks pretty good. This corner here is very concerning, though. Right here. Right here, right here. It is, uh, yeah, because, well, it didn't deform anything critical, but uh, it kind of... have to get a peek in there. Yeah. A quick update about this part. It's obviously a trolley handle shaft or a trolley handle groove, whatever you want to call it. So behind this wall, there are no any critical parts or any battery cells. So even though I dented it, I would say that the battery cells inside of the battery pack are not impacted. So they are safe. And it's designed to be this way because the battery pack itself is designed to be symmetrical. So it doesn't have any trolley handle inside, but it was designed this way for various different reasons. The first reason is to reuse it. If something goes wrong, they can just mirror the battery pack and it will be just fine. Another reason is safety because this safety space can basically crample and compensate all the impact that it goes through the battery pack and your battery battery cells, which is the most important thing, will be fine. The plastic just came off and I think we need just to uh, figure this. But all in all, it's not too bad. It's impressive. It is. <laughs> just look at this. It's just chopped off here. Yeah, but no more light for you. You don't know the power of the dark side. Oh, it's not coming off the same way. Oh, oh, it's it's oh. Okay, so what's about this one? The second one is actually perfect. It has a scratch here. Minor. Very minor dance. Yeah. Some scratches here on the, whatever it is. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a trolley handle. Yeah. So it doesn't matter, disposable. Okay, the wheel. <sighs> All right. Oh, there you go. Here you go, yeah. It's just like that. That's actually a pretty quick teardown. Here's a part of the impact and it was, I think it's a metal plate here that was completely shard. Uh, so huge dent in front, but the controller is surprisingly all right. I mean, besides these guys. Okay, special. Suspension is good actually. I can imagine it'd be just fine. Yeah, I checked it. Like it does everything that suspension should do. Yeah, the shirt is great, man. Yeah, it is. Panda get this shirt. Yeah, red panda. Yeah, red panda. Red panda, yeah. man. They look cute, but they are ferocious. Okay, as you say. I'm holding. Yeah, and the condition is pretty great as well. I mean, it looks pretty nice. I think there is no point to disassemble it further because uh, this this is a motor and the rim is pretty much done. We need to change the whole thing here. I would say, I don't know, probably we can salvage this, right? The easy, easy thing. Besides that, well, obviously the light. <laughs> I'll unplug it just, just like that. Yeah, we saved it. That's important. Yeah, this is very important, yes. After we took care about the wheel, I basically had two options. Either I try to uh, recover the wheel somehow, repair it and stuff, or I will need to start selling uh, the salvaged parts. So I decided to repair the wheel, obviously. The first thing I did, I contacted Lipper Kim directly and I said, okay, I had such a crash, I sent them the video with all the information and the only answer I got, like, check the battery packs. I checked the battery packs, I sent them all that information about them, uh, the images, everything, and I, I've got no answer at all. Just complete silence. And I was like, all right, um, a little bit of disappointment, but anyway. So I decided to contact dealers, and even though I bought my wheel uh, from EVs in Canada, I contacted E Wheels. And uh, I know that they are amazing, especially about solving problems, fixing things. So 
I contacted them was almost overwhelmed by amount of communication uh, suggestions and ideas about how to fix things or how they can help me out with this kind of problem. So we ended up selling them all the parts and right now I'm waiting when they will get them just to get some more information and good or bad news. Anyway, we will see. Uh, it's kind of an interesting process, although, you know, some unexpected expenses. Okay, another thing that I want to address is some comments about tethering myself to a wheel. I just don't feel comfortable, even though I'm a heavy guy, I don't feel comfortable to have a 80 pound anchor connected to my leg or my waist or something like that around such a cliff where it can just drag me down. Uh, and if there is a risk, I think the risk is not justified. And I know that people say that I've been using tethers for all my life and I'm still alive. Yeah, good for you. Good that you are still alive and good that you are in good health, I guess. Uh, but well, it's a personal choice and my personal choice is not to use that. Also, I think that ropes and machinery, which is electric motors such as powerful as an electric motor in a Lipperkim Lynx, are not good friends because if you get it wrapped around spinning an electric motor, spinning very fast and I, I don't like that idea as well. So this is why I'm not using tethers. So I'm not saying that tethers are bad. In some conditions they are fine. Every person has his own decisions and thoughts about things. And these are my thoughts. So yeah. Okay, so uh, this is a teardown video of the Lipperkim links, of the damaged Lipperkim links. And I hope you liked it, because, well, if you don't, uh, a fun fact, I don't really care. Anyway, I guess we will see each other later.